Check one, two. Uh, bonjour. Bonjour. Today we will brew a really good tea. We start now. Today we're brewing an amazing tea. I don't know what it is. I'm gonna brew it like a boss. I showed you how to do this. Now I'm gonna do it live. And it starts now on YouTube. I'm Corey from Corey's World. <sighs> Calm down. You've seen our video on intuitive brewing. You can come this way. If bit. you haven't, click it here. You've seen our video on how to brew an unknown oolong. If you haven't, click it. Because now I'm brewing an unknown oolong. I'm putting my money where my mouth is. Cha-ching! <laughs> and it starts now. And it starts now. How to brew an unknown oolong? You can do it. Perfect. I don't know what's... How to intuitively brew a tea? You can do it. But today, I'm going to do it. Stay tuned. Now. <laughs> you got a point. Now. And okay. it starts now. Yeah. Good? It's okay. <laughs> I try to be... You're pretty cool. Okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. <laughs> too much, too much, right? Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now. now. <laughs> I don't know. What do we want to do? The regular? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh not good. No. What is this? Oh, you cannot oh. do that on a proper video. You gotta run. Cover your eyes. <laughs> right in front of the kids. Shame. <laughs> it's gotta be a little bit pro when we do a recording. Oh, look at that. Right? Great. Ready? Hey, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Hello. Today I am excited and a little bit nervous because we're brewing a mystery tea here. I am super, uh, so you've probably seen some of our previous videos on intuitive brewing and how to brew an unknown oolong, which I think is what I'm gonna be doing today. So if you haven't checked those out, but I'm excited to get started and brew this tea to the best of my ability with zero knowledge what's going on. <laughs> yeah. If you're new to the channel, please uh, feel free to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that uh, you will be notified as soon as we have new videos up or when we go live. You bet. And if at any point during this video, you see something that you think is awesome or helpful, give us a thumbs up, it really helps us out. Now let's dive in. Oh boy, here we go. All right, so here we go. We've got the kettle on. I'm gonna have a quick look at the leaf. It's a pretty dark leaf, like a strip, um, straight leaf sort of deal. Pretty long, pretty, I'm pretty excited. What tea is it? I don't know what tea it is, but it's what got a sweet like aroma. It? I think it's an oolong. Why? Um, based on the long, dark, pretty thick strips, it could be, mm, I don't know. That's what I think. Um, just trying to get some light on it. It could be something else though. It has a bit of that, it has a bit of that, it's dry leaf, right? So I'm not getting powerful, booming aromas here. Oh, I'm sorry, I should have passed that to you. <laughs> it's but okay. uh, it has a bit of that cookie, that shortbread cookie that I sometimes smell in a yellow tea too. So I'm a bit open-minded, mm -hmm. but just at the dry leaf, I'm already thinking, you know, it doesn't smell like Dan Song, but it has that appearance in the leaf, but I'm gonna have to be open-minded because I'm not getting I'm not getting much that's driving me straight to, oh, I'm pretty sure it's this from the leaf. Um, I would lean away from rock tea. It's, mm. It doesn't have that aroma of the dry leaf. It also, the dry leaf is a little bit to the small side for most of those, but who knows, I might be eating my words in a few short minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and warm up the teaware and see if I can get more from the dry leaf aroma. One of the key things I'm gonna be trying to remember 
during this experience, because I really want to nail this. I got to tell you guys, I so <laughs> want to nail this is I'm going to be remembering all the stuff from all the, all the other videos we've made, which sounds kind of funny, but you've probably, hopefully you've watched them, but I'm going to try and take my time and taste carefully when I get to the tasting, which includes aroma, you know, take my time. Here we go. I'm going to warm up the teaware. <laughs> I'm just kind of verbalizing that to half remind myself and half share with you guys my process. So. I quite enjoy this. I just feel like. Oh, anything that involves torturing me. No, it's not torturing me. It's me not doing anything. Because I'm always just sitting there on the brewing seat to brew right? and. Um, it's a huh. little bit different, huh? Having me brewing. Yeah, I love it. Basically, my role here is to watch you just like you guys. <laughs> Yeah, you have to remember though, if I go dead quiet during the brewing, because maybe I can't talk and brew, very possible. Right, right. You gotta, you gotta just throw something out there for me, you know, tell jokes or something. <laughs> I'll try. I'm really quiet when I have tea, I think. Mm. Like... Oh, let's get the leaf in there before the guy one cools mm -hmm. down. So now we've got the leaf in the warmed up guy one. Well, let it sit there for a minute and kind of absorb some warm humidity. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know. As soon as I, the camera started to roll, I like yawned like six times. Okay. okay. The first thing that went through my head when I smelled that aroma of the warmed leaf was familiar. The very first thing that went through my head was I have I think I've had this before. Mm -hmm. If I haven't had this exact tea before, which I may be setting myself up for the fall, but if I haven't had this exact tea before, I believe I've had this tea type. This is so sweet. Mm. Like so sweet, sweet. Cookie sweet though. Not cookie, no. Fruity sweet. Fruity mm. sweet, that intense mm. fruity sweet. Not quite mm. a reason, but that kind of intensity. Okay. I'm not going to rush it, okay? I'm going to have another smell and I'm going to have another look. Would you like another smell? Sure. So that you have extra time to think? No, it's not really for extra time. I don't think thinking about it at this point. I think tasting it's going to be the next big but you thing. You kind of have to decide what time, at least what time of day it is. Well, so then you know the brewing parameters. Right, right. Oh boy. She's got a good point. I was gonna rinse it, mm -hmm. and I think I'm gonna rinse it. Mm -hmm. I, I cut why? Because I want to sneak peek at the liquor color. <laughs> Not if you've <laughs> seen our smart. That's if smart. you've seen our video on how and why we rinse tea, you'll notice that wasn't one of the reasons <laughs> <laughs> but to get a good. sneak peek of the liquor color. But that is my motivator here. So we're going to go in and out. Remember, it's going to be quick, so. Ooh, boy. That was awfully sweet. I started to bounce back towards black tea after that aroma. It was so fruity, right? Oh. But it's not that kind of fruity, mm. right? It's and now I see I this. I think it's very different from black tea it is, sweet. It is. Like black tea doesn't have this intensity of sweetness. Mm. And the intense berry there's a little bit of berry tartness like sweet mm. sweet and tart whoops yeah yeah i don't know for me it's a really intensive sweet that black tea sweet doesn't have black tea has that gentle though very obvious fruity sweet it doesn't have is no, this no, a brew no. this or is the this rinse. a rinse okay no i didn't sip it oh <laughs> I snuck a little sip. I try not to get busted. Mm, not much data. No? I was being too sneaky. <laughs> Me and them, we were kind of in on it together. We tried to get it. We tried to get without getting busted. Okay, let me smell this again. Let me smell this again. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't rush. Oh boy. I feel like this was an engineered selection to stump me. That's what I feel like. <laughs> 
This is an engineered selection. I'm pretty sure that's what I'm dealing with here. It's this not is an really, engineer. I'm just trying to go through those teas we're supposed our, to taste. Our sample box, right? We've got a big box full of samples that we uh, have to taste. Like I don't, but I hope we don't sound like we're complaining about that, right. but we're right. not. Um, and this is on the top, you know, and it's easy opening packaging. <laughs> you see some green coming out of it now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So well, it's, ideally, it's not as dark as it was when it was the dry leaf. So right. I've got a little bit of green and yellow color shining through, mm -hmm. but it's got some dark, some dark as well. Mm -hmm. It's not a, like a perfectly consistent. Oh boy, I have to be really patient when he brews. <laughs> oh, someone's... I feel like I'm so thirsty. And someone just... is thirsty. That's what I'm thinking here. I better step it up, folks. This is not a test for you, you know. It's always a test for me. Personally, I look at it like a test. If this is a test, then I have leaks already because I got the leaves for you. So my steep time, for those of you wondering how I picked that particular time. Okay, here's what, I'm not saying this is right. She's gonna correct me, but again, do I know exactly? Oh boy, that's really greening up. Okay, let's get to the tasting. Yes, anyway, I just, I went with the old one. Just check the liquor color, make sure it, based on the rinse, it, I think of something gold like this. Ah, gold and fuzzy. There's some nice fuzz in there. Mmm. All right. Oh, you know, the kettle's a little bit too close to my elbow. All right, let's get this into the cup. And let's take our, now you may drink Yay, as quickly as you want. Finally. I'm going to be taking my time. Pretty reserved nose, not like booming. That sweetness isn't jumping out of the liquor uh, on the aroma, but it's but it's there. Okay, it's just not it's just not floating out, jumping out, and filling up my nostrils. I'm going to reserve comment for a while while I just let this tea sort of soak in to my taste buds for a minute. I was checking the leaf amount versus the amount of time I let that steep. I'm feeling like it's a little bit light. But I don't think that's right. I think I'm in the zone here. You know, when you first sip tea, sometimes it's been a while maybe since you had tea and you're just coming in at it. You're coming into your tea session dry. That's my situation right now today. So I'm a little bit nervous to make a bunch of statements about the intensity of the brew and all of that because I just need to warm up a little bit. You know, I can smell the dry leaf all day and smell the humid leaf, but it doesn't warm up my taste buds. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. All right. And I'm not going to guess. I'm not going to stake my claim on the first infusion because um, I'm just not. Well, mm. do you feel refreshed? I'm super happy. May I give you a little, the final dollop of the first infusion? Mm -hmm. All right. Mm. Right. So let's dive in with the second infusion. Oh, wow. Have a smell of that though. That berry sweetness, uh, field berries kind of thing. It's that sort of berry, you know. Uh, I wouldn't pick a specific one, but it's like um, in that, uh, like a mixed, a mixed berry pie, sort of blueberry, raspberry, all kinds of berries together. Just that sweet aroma you get from those. Mm. Pretty delightful aroma. Well, ideally you want to, if you have a tea that you really don't know it is what it is like, like, me. like you, ideally you want to figure out by looking at the dry leaf, mm. what 
type of tea, 60 category, what type of tea it roughly is so that you know how to brew that at least to have the first uh, close ones. If you brew, like you put a green tea, the leaf amount of a wu yi, mm. the result might not be very pleasant. <laughs> So, but I have a little advantage, right? Because the, you put the leaf amount, so yes. and I'm actually using that information about how so, long to steep. That's why I'm saying it's not a real test, right? Because if right. it's a real test, I would just give you a, a bunch pile of, of leaf, and you choose how much you. Okay, wrap. next video, guys. <laughs> next video, d depending on the results of this video. So I'm poking around in the leaf a lot, and right. I encourage you guys to do the same, even with the tea you know what you're brewing, get familiar with your leaf, poke around, look at it in the middle of your infusions, but don't wait too long if you're brewing for somebody who's thirsty because you might get in trouble. This is our first tea session of the day. Yeah, we've had a pot, but we haven't had a nice sit down session. Yeah, and I didn't drink much water the whole day. I'm it must be super parched. dry. Okay. I don't want to stress you out. Maybe you pour first. I shouldn't talk to you when you're brewing. You can. I'm basically ignoring you anyway. <laughs> Any thoughts on what type of tea it is? I told everybody that right, you're not going to guess on the first infusion, which is we're still, this is the second infusion, but I'm not going to guess when I pour the second infusion, I'm going to mm. wait and taste it. Okay. I'm the first infusion. I was leaning towards a guess. Mm -hmm based on the uh, liquor color, the aromas I had smelled, and that liquor, the liquor clarity. Mm -hmm. The liquor had some fuzz and it's got, you know, some more, it's got all kinds of stuff in it, which is not bad. Mm. Um, it just pushes me and it's, Let's say what it's not, which is kind of where I was going. The liquor had some fuzz and it had some, uh, it didn't have a uh, very crystal clear. It's not an oolong. Okay. So my initial guess based on the leaf shape about oolong was completely wrong. As I saw it brew and come out as green as it's coming out too, I also was leaning away from that. It doesn't have the aroma profile of a green oolong. I would have smelled more on the liquor, I believe. So we have a lot of wacky teas. How do you know it's not a Mao Cha? I don't know it's not a Mao Cha. And I guess that is a possibility. So for those of you wondering what the heck is Mao Cha? What kind of tea is that? Mao Cha mm. is sort of a generic term for unfinished tea, let's say. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, there, but like it's a partially run, finished tea. Roughly finished. Right, partially mm. finished. Mm. Yeah. So it hasn't been uh, in the case of oolongs. It's a tea that wouldn't have undergone its final roasting um, in, in each it's category. Fully it's fully dried though. Fully Mao dried. Mao Cha is mm. fully dried. Yeah. It's just uh, m missing the last step. -ish. In pour, it means it's not uh, pressed. In oolong, means it's not roasted. I think this is a good tea for after meal, which is exactly our situation. Had a, not greasy, but a pretty like protein, like a pretty mm, heavy, heavy-ish mm. meal. So I still feel really refreshed by this tea and I don't need to brew. I feel so happy about that. <laughs> too many more questions. Are you? <laughs> no, it's just um. Delicious. Mm. Are you? <laughs> it's a drip. Darn it. Um. Okay. No pressure. No. Pressure. Oh, there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of pressure. That last infusion was a little bit strong. Maybe I should speed up this one a little bit. Look at that color. It's a bright yellow gold kind of color. 
bright yellow gold liquor. First two infusions had plenty of fuzz. This one also mm. has plenty of... What uh, do you think of your first and second infusion? Um, I purposely went a little bit stronger on the second and mm -hmm. I think uh, it was easy enough to uh, taste that. Um, a little bit of lingering... That was what my lip smacking was about. There's a little bit of um, uh, lingering, like late... <sighs> A late bitterness and then it cleans up again mm -hmm. on it didn't have that on the first infusion so maybe I'm pushing it a little too hard mm -hmm. I'm surprised by the sweetness of the humid leaf that we both remarked on mm -hmm. and the way that it manifests or doesn't manifest maybe mm -hmm. more correctly in the liquor I'm a bit um, I'm a bit off balance by that, to be honest. Um, it's not like it's not like it's a tea has to follow up in the liquor flavor with mm -hmm. its aroma. That's mm -hmm. not like a rule or something. Right. Certainly not. But it has knocked me. Uh, I was kind of expecting to have a bit of sweetness and then to, you know, guess the tea and be right. And now I'm really struggling with this. Don't tell me. I I'm, feel like I'm you're about to spill the I'm not telling you. I'm telling. Uh, I'm not telling you for a while. <laughs> Questions I think you need to explore a little bit. Mm. For example, you mentioned that uh, this aroma is very similar to something. You know this sweet. Right. You know I had forgotten that because so the flavor. Where doesn't... did you learn that? What is that aroma? Right. right. Like make examples of the teas or something you had. And second, in terms of a brewing one yeah, and two, yeah. I feel like the comparison is good, but it's not um, deep enough. And did you, what you learn from, besides comparing one and two, what did you learn from infusion one and infusion two so that you can improvise or improve the taste mm. in infusion three? Mm. Infusion four now. Oh, because okay. this one's very similar to infusion too. <laughs> um, mm. And what you have been absorbed. Okay, so let me answer some of your questions. So the infusion. aroma that it reminded me of, I'm almost sure it was mm -hmm. a yellow tea aroma that mm -hmm. I that I was recalling. That sort of because at first I had more of a cookie sweetness. The fruity hadn't hit me. It had right. that sort of cookie sweet. But then on later. Um, Later when I smelled it, either because, well, there was definitely more berry to it. Mm -hmm. And that was... And it is refreshing. Um, but it does have some softness too. I'm really leaning towards that. Let me think. Okay. So. I don't know. Okay. It happens sometimes. I swear that it does happen. Just mm -hmm. not on camera. That sometimes I sip a tea and I know what it is right away. And she's amazed and I'm so happy and proud of myself. It's just, that's not today. Okay, that's not this tea. I'm going to go out and make a statement. But I, I'm really, I'm, I'm not full on guessing, but I'm not confident in my answer. You remember the other day we had a dance hall and I'm like, mm, this is a really nice dance hall. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, this isn't that day. <laughs> so I've looked at the leaf, which is, which is really tricky for me. I don't have a big leaf database in my head that I'm going, oh, it's this cultivar. I'm working on that, mm -hmm. um, but that's kind of a, a pro tip. But I've, I'll tell you what I see. I've got some big leaves. I've got some little leaves. The leaves are tender and silky, okay? These are not old leaves. Because mm -hmm. I was, I think I was gravitating towards yellow tea and then I remembered her Mao Cha comment and I thought maybe it's the Mao Cha of a dark tea that I've just never had that Mao Cha. Maybe the fermentation is gonna darken it down. I don't think, I'm not, I may be wrong, but I don't think these tender leaves, and they're, they're not old, they're, they're younger leaf, but they're not buds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think they could withstand much of a dark tea process. Again, I might be totally wrong, but that's going to push me back to yellow tea. I'm going to make a guess right now. I'm going to say that this is yellow tea. This is a yellow tea of Guapian. 
Because I can't find a bud in it. Guanpian. Luan Guapian. Just a yellow tea. Because I'm just taking a wild guess. I want to be really specific, overly specific, so it's impossible that I'm correct. But I Why think... the Guapian? No buds and pretty big leaf. Why a pretty big leaf would lend you to Guapian? I don't know, because I forgot how, how big the leaf was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You mean the Anhui Guapian, the Luan Guapian? Mm. It's a small leaf cultivar. You could... They're not so big though. Okay, they're big. See, I told you. Anyway, yellow? Bingo! Okay, I'm halfway there, okay? I did pretty good. The other okay, part let me, is let, me, the... let me finish. Okay, okay. The, let me finish. Then, if that's okay. the case, because the other thing I was like, these look like these look like Taiwan Yin leaves. So maybe it's yellow tea with Taiwan Yin, but I don't know. Because again, I said my leaf database well, is not very good. At least you're trying different things, which right. is the right trail. It's not a very, it is not very typical yellow tea. Okay, that's kind of my okay. feeling. And uh, we keep staring at the leaf. If you're wondering what the heck we keep staring at, I've got a, I've got <laughs> a little display of leaves spread yeah. out here. Uh, first, that dry leaf smell, that sweetness. You're not gonna find it anywhere else. That sweetness, that's yellow tea. Right mm, away, gave right, away. Right, okay. So, you so don't... I can lock that in. Yes. My instinct was right in that regard. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. That's why when you say it's a similar or something, I want you to dig further to what is right? that? Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. so that's a giveaway. It's worse when you sort of start second guessing yourself and you're like, oh, but maybe not, or maybe this, which is, but if you look at the leaves and you also notice it's not a wulong leaf. The wulong, no matter what color or straight or stuff, that they don't look like that. Mm, mm. So it's a yellow tea, yeah, mm. got it. Good. Yay, thumbs up. Awesome, and a pretty tasty one. Um, In terms of the leaf size, you keep guessing that. So again, this is not your fault or anything. It's You just need experience to yeah. see more leaves, to know, okay, big leaf, does that mean a, a a young leaf from the poor tree or old leaf from a small cultivar like a gua pian plant. Mm. Gua pian is a small cultivar, a small leaf uh, uh, this cultivar. Size would be it can old. never, never right. be. Right. Yeah. Right. If it's that big, that's really old. And like really I said, old. these were silky and tender, that's right. feeling fairly young in terms yes. of the leaf's individual yeah. leaf's age. So at least that would tell you that mm. this mm. is a big leaf cultivar. Oh. Mm. Oh. Right, they're young and still quite large, right. Mm, just by itself. Mm. Very good. And there's some giveaway in the smell in there. If you smell this, it still has it. So that after you brew, maybe more obvious. There is an interesting, mm. super familiar note of this cultivar that goes everywhere. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> the way I said it, it was that a... Oh, it's totally the way you said it is, you should know this. It's, no, it's not you should know this. It's oh, I, I feel every like Every time that. I talk about that cultivar, I always say that. Whichever category is made into, it always have that taste. Right. That you, um, I call that plum. You might call that something else. Oh, uh, okay. I see what you're. So that's giving it away for me because I know that her smell, her categorization of this aroma. This is a uh, yellow tea made from puar. Yeah. Mm. Based yeah. on her comment about plum, not on my genius identification <laughs> skills. But I see. Mm, but now I'm going to pay close you attention this. and lock this into my little brain. This uh, right after this hot smell, mm. it's not in the liquor. When I smell the liquor or stuff, it didn't give me that. No, and in terms of, um, in terms of a Dian Lu uh, sort of parody, I didn't mm. get any. Um, but this, you smell that, it really reminds right. you of and Dian Lu, Dian Hong, all those ones. Right, that, that's one specific 
axis, right? That one yeah. plummy note. Yeah. But I really, I don't know, that's the berry side really got the, covered the plummy for me and still is. I don't have that popping out for me as clear, mm. but I now, I now that you say it, I smell whether it's Shen or... Uh, Dian Hong has that smell too. Or Dian Hong or Dian Lu. Dian Lu also have that. And also we don't you in admit, China. You gotta doesn't usually have that. Yeah, Shu Puer doesn't. Shu Puer doesn't. <laughs> Shen Puer has. Mm -hmm. um, and in China, we don't have many big leaf cultivars. Mm. Y T, Da Bai Hao, Da Bai Cha, Da Hao Cha, and uh, pretty much Puer. Mm. And it, it's not a Y T cultivar leaf shape. So you, you, the second part is really hard to for you to guess because mm. you don't see the tea leaves itself uh, very much. So it's really hard to guess mm -hmm. like the cultivars and yeah. you know, in terms of uh, that's a big, medium or a small cultivars, if you're not familiar, it's really hard to guess because big cultivars have baby leaves. Small yes. leaf cultivars could yes. have quite big leaves. Yeah, you got to take surprising. a bunch of information to figure yes, it out, like yes. not just the leaf size, but how is the leaf tenderness and stuff like but that. But I thought that a poor plumness might give it away. But... Oh well, I was close. I got the type. Um, I think my brewing was okay. What did, how did you feel about the brews? First mm. one was a bit light, I think. Uh, we'll have a debrief now, a full assessment of my performance. My thought, this is my thought. It's not a very good tea it's by itself. It's mm. the very first... Uh, I was going to come is, to that next, but yeah. Right. My, a, why I say that? Because, uh, uh, you know, the good tea is... Uh, you, you, the better the tea, the easier to brew. You brew that, you don't have to pay much attention, and you can at right, least right. get a decent sip. The first sip was really light, mm. but I still get that astringent. Mm. Which means the things comes out, but it's just not the pleasant things right, comes right. out, mm -hmm. right? So the second one, because we all talk about it, it's pretty planned. And then the second one, you give it a longer steep, and um, it worked, so right? It had a it, long it kind of worked, but the but first it, one, in terms of not very not very flavorful, but quite not quite a little bit more stringency. Mm -hmm. You might want to think: Do you straight up? push it or push it in other ways mm. do you do temperature or do you do right. long steep uh, second one was strong and again flavor wise is not as much like in terms of astringent maybe from one to five well flavor jump from zero to two so it's not right. an even jump yeah you know so um not very impressed with mm. the tea yeah. but uh, just i felt like it was it was uh, as a yellow tea. Now that it's now that that cat's out of the bag, I felt like it didn't hit the um, like the Dai um, Ching or Huang Da Cha. It didn't hit that profile, and it certainly didn't hit the sort of high end yellow tea profile. It's no. kind of sitting in no man's land, trying yeah. to do like yeah. it didn't. I think it's pretty mm. uh, trying kind of a mm. yellow tea. Doesn't have the full yellow tea taste when you drink it. The initial dry leaf has it. When you taste it, it has that uh, that uh, poor-ish yellow tea, but not yet quite there mm. kind of thing. Yeah, but... Good. It was really fun though. Yeah? Mm. And you want to do more of those? I'm a quick uh, brewing. I want to do more. And if you want to see more, <laughs> then click that thumbs up down below or leave us a comment and say, hey, yeah, I want to see you stump fill more and bring out more crazy. Like, you know, we got a whole treasure chest of these sorts of little you know, regular teas and experimental teas. So if you like this kind of video, definitely let us know. Mm. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're interested in Chinese tea and tea culture and hit the notification bell so that you will catch us go live and any new videos. Yeah. <laughs> it, That's perfect, I think. Was that? Yeah. And now we'll just finish. Okay. And until next time, keep, keep steeping. steeping.